What's going on guys, Snag here and it's time to wrap up round 5 of the 2024 NRL season and man, that was a awesome round of footy. I've said it about 10 times this year already, this is the best rugby league, best spot rugby league has been in a very long time and I've been loving six or seven games out of the eight every weekend. I mean, 10 years ago, I'd luckily maybe like two or three. It's been brilliant, man. The rugby league's in a great place. I've been saying this a long time, and every single reporter just wants to talk about, just wants to complain, bros. This is why on this channel, man, we only talk about footy. We don't talk about bad reference decisions and who should have been suspended and all this sort of trash, guys. Footy. Footy's awesome. Let's not talk. Why are we talking about refs, bro? Why are we talking about refs? Um... Thanks to everyone that subscribed over the weekend too, guys. We did hit 4K over the weekend. And uh, make sure you are subbed if you're not already, guys. I do drop my shorts pretty regularly, so a um, lot easier to sort of keep up with me there as well, guys. So thank you so much to everyone. Got some cool stuff happening as well. Can't tell you yet, but I'm pretty damn excited. So let's get into it, lads. Let's get into it. We'll go through the games. We'll have a look at the ladder. We'll have a look at the casualty ward because there's some injuries, bro. There's some injuries, man. But just before we do... Let's do some ASMR. Oh, yeah. Nothing better than ice cold Pepsi Max. Melbourne Storm, 34 to 32 to the Broncos. Man, we hit all three of our punts in this one, too. I was stoked, <laughs> absolutely stoked. But I don't normally like these high scoring games, but this was amazing, absolutely incredible. Can't wait to talk about this one. <laughs> Than this one, <laughs> bro. I also had an aneurysm through this thing. Bulldogs hold off the Roosters with eleven men, thirty to twenty-six. Then we have the Knights pump the Dragons, thirty to ten. The Warriors put on a clinic. Up the Wars, they are looking scary. You, you, if you're a Wars fan, you're happy. You're happy, man. Uh, Seagulls get it done in Daily Cherryman's 310th, becoming the most capped Sea Eagle. Wow, that's absolutely impressive. Get it done against the Penrith Panthers. Dolphins hold off the West Tigers, 26-16. Cowboys get it done against the Titans, 35-22. Uh, and Raiders absolutely hump the Eels. And the Sharkies win the bye. How good. All right, let's have a little look see, guys. I'll just refresh this to make sure it's all up to date and refreshed. All right, so Dolphins up on top. Playing Brisbane next week. Battle of, Battle of Brisbane. How good. I might even go to that one. Um, Cowboys in at second, Storm, we have the Sharkies, Raiders, Warriors, Sea Eagles, and the Panthers round out the eight. And man, there's some heavyweights in this bottom, bottom, uh, what is it, bottom nine now, yeah, there's Roosters, Broncos, I mean, Knights were in the top eight last year, Eels, I don't know if we can call them a heavyweight anymore, and Rabbitohs, wow, absolutely nuts, guys. So let's have a real quick look at the casualty ward, guys, to see when some players are back. This is usually pretty up-to-date. I'll just refresh it just in case. Um, but Payne Haas is saying round eight still. Pakura round eight as well. Um, Reese Walsh is saying round eight, but I hear he might be back next week. I don't think he will. I reckon they'll give him one more week. Mariner round nine, back. He actually broke his back during this game, guys. Reynolds hamstring, I'm going to Nostradamus it and say three weeks. I think they'll give him three weeks, especially if they win this game. Um, if they lose this game and they're two and four, I reckon they might rush him back. But if not, then um, yeah. And um, Xavier Wilson, head knock to be confirmed. I wonder what's going on there. Mm. All right, Addo Carr. Isn't he back? He's back. What's this round six nonsense? Um, Jacob Preston, round nine still. Um, Blake Wilson illness? I didn't even know that. Now, man, Dolphins are hit hard. So we've got Lemu Lemu round six, so he might be back. Max Plath round seven suspension. Herbie, this is a scary one. I'm, I thought it was his peck. Remember he did his peck about two years ago? And uh, how much did Plath and bloody Flegler look? That looks, he's like a little mini-me. That's nuts. Um, Herbie Farmworth, yeah, so it's arm or AC or shoulder or something like that, not his peck. I was like, oh, peck could be the season. Because you, you can't train, you can't do anything with it. You lose all your strength. Kafusi done his hamstring as well. Gilbert, we know, is out for the season. Uh, pretty nuts. Now, Parramatta, they need Bryce Cartwright back ASAP. And Mitchell Moses, not looking good. And not much getting better for the Bunnies. Zach Hoskins, when he back round six. All right, that's good. Now, Corey Horsburgh did do his abdomen in this one, guys. Um, 
and hopefully Whitehead's good. He's getting a bit older. Calves, I don't like when I hear it, see an older player with a calf injury. Um, who else? Lindsay did his hamstring again, or is that the old one that hasn't refreshed yet? We have to wait and see, but I don't think these are super, super up to date, guys. But um, Royce Hunt calf still round eight. Toby Rudolph, obviously these are just up for sort of, you know what I mean. They can come back earlier or later. Now Warriors DWZ round six, that's good. They need Dylan Walker back. Metcalf's going to be well, and Bunty did his hamstring as well. And what? Nakora's out till round fourteen. What? That sucks. That sucks for the Warriors, man. And uh, Lockie Galvin's a seven. Tor, oh, I forgot they've still got Tor. Ankle round 11. Dewey round 17. Bateman head knock. He'll be fine. And then Fanu. And, yeah. But anyway, that's everyone there. I just wanted to go through this, guys. Just to show you how many people are injured. It's it's. There's a lot. There's a lot, millions and millions and millions of dollars in the salary cap. Broncos might have about bloody... Oh, no. Reese isn't on big money yet. But there's still... <laughs> A few bucks on the sideline. Jesus Christ. Oh, Storm versus the Broncos. Tries to Katoa, Xavier Coates, Katoa again, Warbrick, Wishart, Jerome Hughes, Mariner, Ezra Man, Arthurs, Ezra Man, Benjamin Tikura. Good debut for the big fella. All right, man of the match for this one was Jerome Hughes. Man, he is so good. He is so damn good. He is amazing. He's so underrated. Like, so, so underrated. Like, I think I heard someone, one of the podcasters talking about, if he was, you know, if he was from New South Wales, he, he'd be, he would have strolled into that New South Wales team the last few years. He's been absolutely incredible. Um, now, the game sort of went a bit funny. Like, we did hit this, uh, we actually had no tries in the first eight minutes. And it did, like, because I just had a feeling there would be a feeling out process and it, it hit sort of thing, which was great. And then the floodgates just opened and it was absolutely nuts. And it was a bit strange too because I actually felt like Broncos almost scored all their tries against the runner play. <coughs> you know, like Dean Mariner's one was long range. Um, can't remember exactly how it unfolded, but I remember it was pretty long range. Ezra Mam had one off that long kick, and even though Broncos were good, but I felt like they scored their points against the run of play a lot of the time, which was really strange, whereas I feel like Melbourne's were a little bit more, you know what I mean, set up, get to a spot, run your play, and you do your thing sort of thing. But Broncos just hung in there, and looked, they looked really good. Um, yeah, it was it was nice. Uh, Ezra Mam, I thought he had his best game, period, I've ever seen, including the grand final. Um and the main reason was he just got involved. Like, his grand final performance was brilliant, but outside of those three tries, he wasn't doing a whole heap. It was just, you know, like, he was sniffing around, doing bits and pieces and this and that. But this one, he was getting his hands on the ball. He was getting dirty. He was taking runs. Even just being a link, man, just whatever. He was just involved. I thought it was his best game in a Broncos jersey. He was just saying a lot that he pretty much was five minutes away from winning a Clive Churchill medal. Okay, my chair's squeaking. Sorry about that, guys. Um... So, yeah, that was really good signs for the Broncos. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, now, just on Ezra, um, it was quite funny. I actually, in the off-season, there was, I heard, like, you know, like good, you know, like podcasts, and I think Brandy even said it in bits and pieces that Ezra Mann's defence was really bad and was going to get targeted. I remember thinking, Ezra's defence isn't bad. And normally when they say it at that level, you know, like Brandy and the guys on 360 and, you know, Fox, you know, normally I at least have been thinking that. I remember thinking, Ezra doesn't have bad defence. His defence is great. But I started watching him this year. I'm like, oh, shh, he actually does. It's actually, it's not, it's because he's a good defender. Like, he tackles well, he tackles hard, he hits you, he's strong. But um, he got exposed pretty hard in this game. Um and Brandy, it was funny, Brandy was in the commentary, actually said it again. He sets his feet way too early. And he, any late footwork or a bigger man, like, he got run over. He got set, and then Katoa sort of took his inside, scored a try. And then there was another one where he got set again. We saw a couple of weeks ago against Penrith. <laughs> man, um, Cleary just took him to school. Now, I don't think that's going to be an issue from teams outside of the top four. It is actually really hard to isolate one player like that. Melbourne, great team. Penrith, great team. I don't think we're going to see the Gold Coast Titans isolating and running beautiful lines in the hole that Ezra Man rate left. Um, so I don't think it's a huge issue, but it's definitely something that needs to be fixed. But I'm sure it can. He's still young. Um, he got thrust in that. He's, he's still so young. 
he's still so young, so I'm sure he'll sort it out. But that was a definite. Like there, there was points that, like if Melbourne targeted that more, I think there was as many points there as they sort of wanted. But um, yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, Renner goes down at half time. Um, Broncos defense did look a little unorganized after that, but it still was all right. Like it was still all right. Um, the only only knock I had on the Broncos in this game, to be fair, was Jordan Ricky and Fletcher Baker. Like, how do you let? Like, for example, Benjamin T. Akur, everyone was talking him up. Oh, he looks brilliant. Like, he's unstoppable close to the line. He did that try over Pappenhausen, I think it was Munster. Like, two, two, the two smallest dudes on the 130 kilos, six foot eight dude running. Of course, he scored. Bro, Broncos, Jordan Ricky and Fletcher Baker are propping a big, well built second rower. Let a, 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 a substitute, what's it called? An interchange half run through over the top and through them to score a try that's not good enough that was pretty weak um but besides that i thought broncos were pretty good like there's just like people are going oh you leaked you know you leaked like, stop it man that was that was a high quality game it was awesome so much fun to watch and uh, i i enjoyed every single minute of it man i like me and my son were watching it man we're like oh, oh we'll just like skits it out man we're having you know like um i i, I tipped melbourne but I had Broncos with a head start as well, so I was like, "Man, it was it was nuts." So yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Um, I should look up what my punts were. I think I hit three or three or four from four. It was, it was real good. Um, oh, and that's just on them two guys. So I technically went six from eight, but I I actually only went five. So in my previous video, I can't call. It. I'm going to say five and a half. I did say um, so. We had Melbourne, we had Roosters, which lost. We had Knights, we had Wars. We had Penrith, which lost. We had Dolphins. We had Cowboys. Now, this game here, I actually did save Parramatta. Put Junior Paulo on the bench. I think I think Parramatta will win it. I called it, and that was completely wrong. But in my tips, I actually forgot to change it. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself a half point because I did actually tip the Raiders right on my tipping comp. But in my preview video, I did say if Parramatta run Junior Paulo on the bench, I think they win. So, trash call for you guys, but I still got the goodies on that one. Let me know how you went in the comments too, guys. Uh, like five from eight, three from eight, whatever you hit over the weekend, guys. Um, so, let's have a look at these now. I do normally pre-look at all this sort of data, but I just, um, I'm just winging it today, lads. I, just, I was too excited to look through it all. I was just like, I just want just to get into this. Both teams completed at 85 and 86%. Um. Storm won the middle battle a little bit. Um, Post-contact metres, they definitely won there. Six line breaks to five. 25 tackle breaks to 20. 42 to 41. Like, this is all really even. Um, Broncos' ruck was a little slower. I saw that to the naked eye. Uh, Ten offloads to four. Um, what else we got here? Tackles. Man, this was what this is why people say, oh, do some defense, bro. This is awesome defense. 92%, 89%, 20 missed tackles and 25 missed tackles. That is high quality, man. That is like it's it's pretty like around 30. If you if you get it just under 30, you're done really well. And usually one team's some sometimes both teams are substantially over 30. But to have both teams under 25, 25 and under missed tackle. That's really, really good. So that's why when people were saying the quality of the game was bad, I was like, what are you talking about, man? The missed tackles were good. You know, I actually, I really enjoyed it. Like, I, the errors both under 10. You know what I mean? Like, eight and seven, it's it's good. It's good. So now, Broncos obviously missed some players, but I think it'll be fine. Now, I just wanted to quickly talk about Storm and what, because I've been seeing people say, can they win the comp? Are they blah, blah, blah. Are they making up numbers? This, that, and the other. I, I, I'm not stupid enough to write off the Melbourne Storm. I, you know, wasn't stupid enough to do it for the last 20 years. You know, always, you always think they're going to fall off and then they come back. But to me, what they're missing is I, I've been trying to put my finger on it. I keep hearing people say they're short a big front rower. They need not, you know, like they need it. You don't, bro. Like all that stuff, that size thing, punching through the middle, speed kills. Like you don't need it. Look, everyone said, oh, you need tall wingers. Look at Penrith. Two shortest wingers in the comp. It, neither of their props are over six foot two, or I, I dare say they're both just over 100 kilos, maybe 110. That, that's not the issue. What what I personally think they need is Pat Carrigan, <laughs> Isaiah. To me, they're missing a really link 13 to link up, to link 
um, Grant with the halves with the like. I, I was watching that game and I was like, Pat Car- if Pat Carrigan and Liero swap jerseys, Melbourne win this easily. And I looked at it a bit more, looked a bit more of their play. I'm like, they don't have a good link. They don't have that lock that can just he can take that hard run like, like Yo, like Carrigan, like Victor, like Cam Murray, smack through the middle, get a quick play of the ball, or they can fake it, slip it out the back, and that's all, that to me. That's all they're missing. And the spine has grown. I think the 13 is almost part of the spine now. And um, I think if they had that, like if they had any one of those guys I just mentioned, I think they would probably be right on Penrith level. Um, moving forward, it's, it's yeah. I'm actually, they've never played like that though, and maybe that's not what they want to do. But Paddy Carrigan will probably suit their team the best out of those players I just mentioned because he he, he plays almost like a front rower, and his passing game sort of comes second. The other guys, Isaiah Yo in particular, is more link and run link run second. Um, but either one of those guys, I think that'd even kill for Adam Elliott, just mid level thirteen, but can ball play, can run a hard line. I think that'd even kill for him. Because Liero ain't him, but like just like just think about that for a second. What what do you think the score would have been if Carrigan played for Melbourne and Liero played for Broncos? Probably thirty four to twelve. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, Paps was good. Who else was good? In man, Katoa was absolutely incredible. Man, he's such a good player. Um, Jerome Hughes, one hundred and six running meters. One line break, one line break assist, two try assist, two tackle breaks. Katoa, two tries, 125 run metres, but they were violent run metres. Two line breaks, absolutely brilliant. Um, Welsh came on and just started offloading like crazy. I don't know what's happened to him. He was the origin front row for not long ago, and then he's putting up this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what's his... What's his defence like? Oh, who cares? Tackle efficiency, Christian Welsh, eleven tackles. It's pretty poo, man. Pretty poo. Um, Bloor. Okay, so I really liked him as well. Um, I thought he, he he's going to be nice on that edge. You can tell he wasn't it wasn't super slick, but having him and Katoa, scary, scary, scary. I think he's going to make a home of it there. Tristan Saylor for me played awesome. A few mistakes, like, bros think he's going to kill it every single weekend. Like, he had a good game last week. He's not going to be that quite that high level every weekend. Every player has good and bad games. But um, I felt like he tried to be a little bit of a hero at the end of the game, which was fine, and it wasn't bad or anything like that, but um, solid. Like, I still thought he was really good. Man, I'll tell you what, Selwyn Cobo, <coughs> he's, he's just absolutely impressed me at Centre A. He's been... He's incredible. Like I cannot believe, like how much better he is than I thought he'd be. Like his, his stats don't look great, but he he was absolutely brilliant. I thought I actually really like Tony Staggs in this game. Jesse Arthur's was on one. Jesse Arthur's was on one man. He was crazy. And look at Ezra man there, 149 run meters is just absolutely insane. I had Jesse Arthur's in my Super Coach team too. Killed it. I won all my Super Coach games this weekend. Absolutely murdered it. Got a little dicey there at the end though, because I had a few Parramatta players in it. But and look at Patty, just 177 meters, 69 post contact, just absolute beast. I reckon he updated his contract a little early. <laughs> he really did. 43 tackles, one miss. He's crazy, absolutely crazy. But yeah, cracking game, man. Cracking, cracking game. Loved it. Oh, onto this monstrosity that was so entertaining. All right, so man of the match for this one? No one. That's what I've written down. No one deserved to be man of the match. Uh, so Sherry started in that one. This this is my notes. What the hell was that game even? <laughs> All right, so pretty much general flow of this game was everything that possibly could have gone right for the doggies went right. Not in calls, 50, like just everything. I'm not saying they got lucky. It was just, just one of those things where everything went right. Like I had Rooster's first try to score. That thing was over in the first 15 seconds. And then um, and just everything went right. They looked great. Like what was it? What, 24 nil at half time, whatever it was? One, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. Jeez, he only scored one try in the second half. And then um, 
Dom Young goes off, 27th, 26th minute. And was, like, I was thinking this game could be anything. Like, Dom Young's huge loss for them. He k- takes all their metres. He's just, they couldn't really replace it. Was, it was crazy. And Doggies just looked great the whole first half. They really did. Again, like, a lot did go their way. And they looked really nice. But in the second half, I was, it's really hard because this is weird. I think the Doggies actually were the better team. But it was five tries each, and they played eleven men for most, of the, had twelve men for most of the game, and then eleven men for the finals eight, eight or nine minutes. So like, really weird. That like they got with eleven men, they got pumped. Like twenty six to six would have been the score. That's terrible, bro. <laughs> like, that is really really bad. Um, Victor Radley, should, and this is a thing too. Like there was a few bad things that like Victor Radley shouldn't have been sent off of Sinbind for starters. He didn't even get charged. So how do you get sent off or Sinbind when you don't you don't even get charged? Um, and yeah, it was just wild. Um, I, I don't know how to chalk it up, like because I I want to be positive for the doggies, but it was so tr- they second like it was so bad. And to be honest, what I actually think saved the doggies was who was what was this fella's name who got knocked out. Like Roosters were, were, were storming over the top of them. I, I honestly think that Roosters, it's, let's say this didn't happen, I think the Roosters could have won by 12 or more. Like that, That's how hard they were coming over the top of them. Who was that guy that got knocked out? Harrison Edwards. So Roosters were just pumping, pumping, pumping them, pumping them. And then this guy gets knocked out and he has to get stretched off. Doggies were out on their feet, like out on their feet. And then this was a good 10-minute break because they had to get the Medicab out and everything like that. So... That next, the next two or three sets were Bulldogs' best sets of the second half. Like they actually looked great because they had they were fresh, they freshened up, they were, they were absolutely run off their feet. So I know it sounds weird, but Harrison Edwards I think saved them by getting knocked out in this one. Um, like was it? Yeah, White just ran over the top of him, KO'd him, he was gone, and um, yeah, it was. It, I think it really saved them. To be fair, I th- that were Roosters were coming over the top of them. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they scored on that set. Um, the way they were rolling up the field and stuff like that. Uh, Kickow got knocked out Teddy as well. I mean, everything that went wrong for the Roosters could have gone wrong. Um, it was just, it was just, it was nuts, man. It was absolutely carnage. It, it was just, it was pretty entertaining though, I'm not going to lie. I was sitting there just going, because my punt was, I had Roosters to win as well in a punt. And I was like, if I was at, if it was back in the day and it was a tab, I would have scrunched up my ticket and thrown it over my shoulder and then had to go digging through it just before the game finished. But yeah, it was wild, man. It was absolutely wild. But doggies, I don't know, doggies, I don't know if roosters were good. I don't know how to dissect this game. It was just so damn weird. But doggies, look, they looked bad against 12 men for a half of football. It's not very good signs. Um... Now, just on the kick-out thing, my personal opinion on this is I think they have to bring the shoulder charge back, at least in that sweeping situation. Shoulder charging is so safe. It's so safe. Like, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Like, just just look at the position I'm in, man. So, what, what, do you think I'm, what position do you think I'm most likely to get knocked out? Like this, protecting my thing, protecting my chin and my head where I know where everything is, or this. Like, think, remember Chrissy Sandow? Five foot three, about 80 kilos, with a beer belly. He used to shoot out the line of props all the time. Tag me in a video of him being hurt or him hurting anyone. You, can't, It's actually hard to get hurt. It looks, it looks spectacular. The only time a shoulder charge really goes wrong is when a big man does it to a little man. Big on big, it's fine. Small on big, it's fine. It's just big man on little man. It, it can you can shoulder them in the head, but swinging arms happen anyway. Like what what's the big deal? But this is twice now. Teddy's been knocked completely unconscious by a massive Fijian monster because he's had to go in like like this and hope for the best. Like it's just silly, man. Like if he comes across and shoulder charges kick out, they both tumble into touch, jump up, and kick out goes ah, and he goes sweet. Instead. Probably got five years shaved off his life. Probably can't remember his kids' daughters, his kids' names for the next week. It's stupid, bro. I cannot believe they got rid of shoulder charge. It is so ridiculous. I'd, I've never, I've never been hurt shoulder charging anyone or been hurt. Not even close. The only, yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, but yeah, that was silly. But anyway, let's have a look at these stats. I mean, this is a thing too. They completed high, Roosters completed low, and scored. This is why I was sort of. I'm, I'm trying to be positive for the doggies, but it's it's a little bit hard. And all that possession ran for the same amount of meters, roughly. Lost the post contact meter battle. Line breaks. This is what I noticed a little bit with the doggies too. Very easy to. This is the thing. When you're a smaller pack, I've said this about Reed on this channel quite a few times. It's very you get off your line, bang. But do you know how much more energy it takes to tackle someone when you're smaller than them? And that adds up over a game, if that makes sense. So it's very easy to be up for it in the first 20, 25, but you're going to burn out a little bit at the end. If you watch Bulldogs games last year, Reed Marnie was just missing tackles, just about every tackle at the end of games, just because he just ran out of steam, like, yeah, he's got all the energy, he's doing that, and I'm talking about all their forwards now, like, just being small, like, it just, it takes more energy to put Payne Haas down when you're 80, 90 kilos, when your biggest prop's 100, and theirs is 130, it does take the gas out of you, man, so, they really don't have that, yeah, like, that, that, that is nuts, like, that is nuts, 69 to 86, and they, uh, ran for the same amount of meters and lost post-contact, um, and look at that, look at these errors, 30, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, nice quick play, the balls, though. Good thing about having a smaller pack. Um, what else we got here? Yeah, defense way off. Missed tackles 40 to 34. I mean, we just saw the we just saw the difference between that and the Melbourne game. 16 errors from the Roosters. Just insane. Absolutely insane. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Um, let's have a look, see if we can find some good stats from any of the bros. Um, Blake Taff, 40, uh, no one did much, eh? Hey? Josh Curran was good, 110. Billy Army kick out was brilliant. Billy Army, that was a very Penrith performance from him. He looked great. Five tackle breaks. Curran, six tackle breaks. Look, Billy Army did all that and he had a 2.85 2 second play the ball. That is really, really good, man. Really, really sharp. Um, and let's have a look at these tackle efficiencies. Uh, Blake Taff obviously got knocked out and one tackle made. Uh, Stephen Crichton, 33%. What? Stephen Crichton made two tackles and missed four? Wow. That is atrocious. Jesus Christ, I've never seen it so low before. I've never seen anyone in the history miss double the amount of tackles as they, as they are made. Wow, that is absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, we are. Josh Curran, 47 tackles, three missed. Josh Curran made 47 tackles and missed less tackles than Stephen Crichton. That is insane. <laughs> He's a little harder defending out on an edge. You do get a lot more one-on-ones, but yeah, wild, man. Absolutely wild. Man, a lot of people had um, Dom Young in their super coach teams too and got absolutely slaughtered. Uh, Teddy, I mean, he got knocked out. Yeah, this this game is, just, is one of these weird ones. These stats aren't really going to mean anything. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ. Look, Cleary. Dominic Young won. One tackle, two missed as well. Jesus Christ, two thirty-three is in one game. That's wild, absolutely wild. Oh, anyway, what do we do? All right, Knights Dragons. Man of the match for me was Cogger. Wet footy played to perfection. It's actually pretty funny. Like I was loving this wet weather footy, man. I was loving it. It was so good. I wouldn't want it all the time, but I was loving it while it was happening. It was actually pretty funny because I played a bit of fullback, and I remember just set watching the. The try hadn't been scored yet, and I remember um, just seeing all the water. I just saw all the water there, and I got, got flashbacks. I was like, "Oh man, I remember when I was a fullback, and like someone would like grab the ball through, and you go to chase it, and it just stops, and you're like, Whoa, and you got to chase back after it the other way because they've, they've booted it, like they've thumped the ball, and then it just goes do and just stops, and you're like, and then someone scores a try, and you're like, oh, I had that covered, and just. Cogger, and then not long after, I think it was Cogger, doom, and then um, Sloan overran it, boom, try. I was like, oh, man, that was crazy. That was like a premonition. Uh, he just They just played the conditions better. I thought they played really great wet weather footy. Knights looked really, really nice. Not perfect. <sighs> Bloody Ponga was. Um, but, yeah, it was it was just a, just a really good performance. I mean, Zach Lomax's pass was just insane, absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, Zach Lomax got put in the full back and then Sloan went back on the win and then after the game, the coach said um, he was just playing bad with a footy out the back and wasn't willing to dive on the balls and stuff like that. But 
Zach Lomax is on one, and um, he looks so good, man. I was thinking about this today. If Zach Lomax and Latrell Mitchell went to the open market right now, well, I don't know, maybe not other clubs, but I personally would probably take Zach Lomax right now. I think he's got... I think we might have seen Latrell ceiling, and I don't think we've seen Zach Lomax's yet. He's crazy. He's absolutely crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was it was just a crazy game. It was it was, it was awesome to watch. I re- I really enjoyed the wet weather footy. Uh, Dragons just didn't play good wet weather footy. I mean, seventy six percent in those conditions is actually not too bad. Like the rain was so bad, the wind was so bad. Knights were getting penalties and not kicking for touch. They were just taking taps. So that's how crazy it was. Uh, run meters about the same. High sixteen hundreds. Line break six to four. Um, average set distance. I, I thought their middles were pretty good, the Dragons. There was parts of the Dragons that were okay. They won the ruck. Um, Ten offloads to three. Ten offloads in that rain's not too bad. Um, Defense was good. I don't think the Dragons were that horrible. I just don't think they played... You know what I mean? Wet weather footy is good. I actually thought they played okay. I didn't think they were horrendous or anything like that. And look at these missed tackles again. Both under 25. That's great. Absolutely great. Um... Look at these errors. Damn. It's a lot of errors. But um, look, man, I'm, I'm happy to write those errors off to the... Well, half those errors off to the weather anyway. Uh, Caelan Ponga was on one. 14 points, one try, five conversions, 100%. I had him as my captain and my super coach. Thanks for playing. Uh, 117 metres, two line breaks, two line breaks, assist, try assist, eight tackle breaks. Damn. Uh, I thought Gago had a bit of a stinker for... Uh, Tuala's looking nice. He's looking better. Um, I think moving forward, Cogger and Hastings is the halves combination. I'd, I don't know. It's hard because you're sort of already carrying a hooker on the bench. Um, Leo Thompson looked great. Really good comeback game. Um, he looked real good. Uh, Jack Etherington. Uh, not Jack Etherington. Uh, who's the other fellow? Leo Thompson, where's um, Dylan Lucas? Look pretty good too. Look nice. Look nice. Uh, Dragons. What did uh, what did Zachy Lomax end up putting up? Zach's got to get to Parramatta, man. Two hundred sixteen meters, seventy five post contact, line break, two line break assists, one two try assists, six. Like, when have you seen a game like that from Latrell lately? Six tackle breaks, a try. He's good, man. He's good. He's better than everyone. He's better than everyone's been sleeping on him. Obviously, the Dragons weren't because they paid him. But, yeah, it was nuts. All right. Up the Waz. That's all i got to say. All i got to say. Man of the match for me, Wade Egan. Bro is putting on a clinic. Bro is... Bro's in the conversation with Grant and Appy for me, man. Like, that game, and he, do, he does this quite a lot, but he doesn't get much raps for it. He is on one. He is so good. Like, his craft. Like, watch the I watched, just saw the highlight reel just then, just before Matty John show started. It was better than I thought. The craft, the deception, the, the, just hitting blokes on the chest. Instead of up here or down here, he is nice. He's real nice. He has to say, I'd almost say he's the second most important player in this team. Not the second best, but second most important. They do not look as good without him. And just quietly, Warriors too, they, they might be the form team. I mean, we, we they're, they're two and three. You know what I'm saying? Like their first half against the Sharks was brilliant. They just fell off in the second half. I'll give you a pass, man. It's round one. Stuff like that happens. Round two, two, a, a crazy try, and then literally a miracle try, a, a try of the century, which we we'll probably never see again in this decade, to, to beat them. And then 3-0 oh no since that. I mean, Warriors missing five players against a desperate Bunnies team with Luttrell and... Man, crazy. Now, Lachlan Ilias actually broke his leg in New South Wales Cup, so they are stuck with Dean Hawkins now. Um, but yeah, I was, Wade Egan is just special for me, man. Sean Johnson tore him apart, but it was Egan's deception and stuff. The way he was, he was he's so good, man. 
He's so like he's been the best. Like him and Appy have been better. I think been better than everyone, including Harry Grant this year. If I'm picking a team tomorrow and I have to pick the absolute best hooker I can to win a game for my life, I'll probably pick Harry Grant still, obviously. But Wade Egan, if if I got him in the draft, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad. Put it that way. Um, big difference for me was. When Warriors made line breaks, there was someone backing up all the time. Or even just like when Egan went, Egan got a quick play of the ball. He ducked out. He had support. He had he had that offload for line break. He had a lot. He had a runner. Damian Cook got two or three in the first half. Two or three fast play of the balls. Dipped out. Created not a, not a line break, but just created a situation. And no one was backing up. In fact, there was one. There was one play. I don't can't remember if it was first or second half. He feigned, both markers went, he dipped out, went right, and not only was no one pushing up, every single South player was standing there. Like, no one was even lined up to take a run. Like, on a fast play of the ball. Not what... Bro, that that is... Like, I haven't seen that at NRL stand in a long time. That, that is really bad. Like, like, he went to pass, and everyone was just standing there. And then, I think he just, like, sort of almost walked it up to the line. It was it was terrible, man. I was sitting there going, what the hell? Like, no one even put their hand up to... Sometimes you get caught flat. Sometimes if you're on one edge, you think the play's going right, your hooker dips out, and then you go, oh. And then you... But at least you then go, oh, shit, he's gone right outside, and you start running. Like, no one even started running. He was bad, man. Really, really bad. Um, Warriors were so good, they got to bring Sean Johnson off early. Um, but, yeah, just clinical from the Warriors and like I said if they can win half their away games make their home a fortress they're going to be top four and dare I say they might power rankings wise they might be the best team in the comp they they look really really good 84% completion great Bunnies just kept shooting themselves in the foot they're going to be without Latrell Mitchell now for three weeks I believe just dumb that that elbow is just dumb um, look at this, nearly ran for two kilometres, restricted them to 1,500. Three line breaks to six. I mean, they're beating them everywhere. 25 to 30 tackle breaks, 38 metres per set to 43. Play the ball speed's about the same. I thought Totola and a few of the forwards are actually pretty nice. Um, offloads 10 to 5. This is the crazy, the Warriors aren't offloading much at all. I saw about three or four times they could have easily offloaded and they didn't. So, yeah, they're really gone... The Penrith route, turning guys under, big meters from your back three, sniffing around the middle. <sighs> scary, scary times. If you're not a Wales fan, 89 to 87 tackle, uh, missed tackles 25 to 30. So Bunnies didn't miss a ton of tackles here. So at least the effort was there. Uh, let's have a look at some of these Warriors. Um, the trail two line breaks. He looked okay with ball in hand. I, I thought Jackie White was trying his ring out. Tale Mills actually had what, one of the better games I've seen him play. Um, other than the errors, they weren't. It was weird too. Like Cam Murray came off for a long time. I've been saying Cam Murray needs a break, but he was off for a good forty minutes. Eh? Like twenty minutes each side of half time, maybe, maybe not that long, but it seemed like it. It seemed long because I had him in my super coach, so maybe that's why I was sitting there going, come on, get, get Murray back out there. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was clinical from the Warriors. It was just abs Like, this was just a straight beat down, man. Like, a lot of these errors were scoreboard errors, and yeah, now they're not going to have Luttrell. I mean, Chance was brilliant on his comeback game. I mean, 263 metres, one line break, one line break assist, two try assists, five tackle breaks. That is insane numbers, man. He's so good. He's so good. Uh, I thought Montoya was nice and strong. Roger looked nice on the wing. It might even be his position. Might even be his position. I mean, I think fullback's his best position, but the way this Warriors team plays, I actually like Charles better at fullback. Just because he's going to put up this just about every week. And he makes that right edge so much sharper. Tamari Martin was great on his comeback game. Um... AFB's late footwork just fucking gets my willy wobble on every single time, weekend day. Eh? I'm just like, oh, he's going to get folded here. Nah, he's going to find a seam and make six post-contact metres. He's so good. I've never seen a big dude move like that. I never have. I mean, I thought Junior Paulo had the best subtle footwork for, you know, an oversized prop. Obviously, some smaller props have nicer footwork. But then, then you just get this dude who's 
bigger, at least taller. Looks like, and just absolutely brilliant. 82 post contact, three tackle breaks. I uh, thought Barnett and Ford were pretty good. Torhu Harris is just a warrior, bro. When he retires, they should change the logo from the Warriors to, to Torhu Harris, man. Just a, just this picture here, just change change it to that. Now, that's a Warriors logo from now on. That dude is an absolute warrior. Uh, he's so nice. Man, Melbourne, I was talking about them needing a really good 13. That would kill for Torhu Harris right now, man. Kill for him. Absolutely kill for him. Seagulls Penrith. This is a funny one, man. Shout out to uh, Cherry for getting the dub on his big game. 310 games for the for the club. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, man of the match for me was Cherry. Um, I thought Panthers sort of had their number early. I mean, Schneider scored. Uh, the turning point for me was... There was two. But one was they ran a trick play for Edward. Schneider kicked the ball in on second or third tackle when they were attacking, and it just didn't come off. It was just... Poor, it was not. It wasn't on to start with, and Schneider didn't execute it. Cleary would have never done that, and if he did, he would have executed it. We know that, um, and that sort of gave Seagulls a bit of momentum. But I didn't think Edwards. That 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 knock that, that was a knock on every day of the week from Kohler. Um Was it Kohler that knocked it on? Yeah, um, or the Kohler try. I can't remember if he knocked it on or the other guy did. That was a knock on, and I, I didn't couldn't care less who won this game. That was a knock on, and I just felt like that just really gave momentum to Seagulls. Having said that, I think Seagulls were better over the eighty anyway. Um, but I felt like yeah, they definitely had some momentum there. I mean, think about that. That went from having a Penrith Panthers relentless Penrith Panthers team attacking your set it, um, line again to six points for you. You get the ball back. Big swing, big big swing. So terrible call. Um, but anyway, that, that's that's footy. Bad calls happen. Like I said at the start of the video, we don't sit here and talk about bad reffing. However, it was a bad decision. It was definitely a knock-on. But yeah, uh, Seagulls, were just, they were great. They completed high, completed better than Penrith. This is what people say, oh, they lost because of that decision. Well, you know, it could have been the completion. could have also been the completion rates, the less missed tackles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they had eight line breaks to three. Won that comfortably. Uh, Penrith, 41 tackle breaks. God damn. Average set distance, 35, 43. Damn. Man, bloody Dylan Edwards. Can't wait to see what his stats put up. And uh, simply second stint was absolutely brilliant, man. Simply, um, they did a really good job of locking up Ola Kawatu. Um, but, sorry, uh, Taniela Paseca, not simply. Taniela Paseca's sec second stint was unbelievable. Really, really good. He could be the best prop in the game if he really puts his mind to it, eh? He's just got to get more consistent. He's so good, man. Um, and simply came off the bench and was brilliant. And Nathan Brown is... A I cannot believe Parramatta got rid of him. Or, or even the Roosters. Like, he did set change that game. He went after Fisher-Harris. Like, he was firing out... Like, no one does that to Fish. And, dare I say, got the better of him? Like, I I'm, f I'm the number one Fish fan here, man. Like, I've been I've been tooting this dude's horn for the last three years when everyone's gone, Payne Haas is the best prop in the game. I'm like, no, Fisher Harris is He's golden boot winner. He doesn't lose many games. He's every the Kiwi well Kiwi Four Nations or whatever it was. Like to me, Fish has just set the standard of props for the last three or four years. I've never seen someone he didn't obliterate Fish, but he definitely if you want to say who had a better game, Nathan Brown had a better game and he came out and put shots on. And Fisher Harris didn't come out and put shots back. That shocked me. I thought Fish was going to come at him, and he didn't. He didn't. Wild. Uh, Liam Henry got knocked out too. Um, I don't like this starting Fish off the bench. Maybe he's not quite right. Um, but I really like Moses and Fish together. Now, I want those dudes... You can stagger them throughout the game. So say you want to go start them both. Moses, so even Fish comes off 20, 22 minutes into the game. Moses stays on till about the 32-minute mark. And then, you know what I mean, then, yeah, you just stagger them in the second half like that too. So you still get plenty of game time together, but one stays on a little longer in the first half, one stays a little longer in the second half or whatever. Something like that. But, yeah, I didn't. I don't like them not... They, 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 they drown teams in that first 20 minutes. I mean, if you actually look... It, oh, grand final, perfect example. They Fisher, Harris and Moses and, and Isaiah Yo just, just absolutely 
that, that dominated Brisbane's pack through the middle and the, the score reflected it, the stats reflected it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they went off and Broncos made a run. It was freaky. But when they came back on in that second half together at the same time, Broncos were just out on their feet. Like they imagine imagine drowning, like you're drowning gasping for air, and then they're like then it's like you get up, then they go, now swim for, for forty minutes. Good luck with that, man. You you're gone. You're out on your feet. You're out on your feet. Um but yeah, I just I didn't like it, but anyway. I don't know if that was a good analogy or not, but you get what I'm saying. Like being being so like you you're so gone and then you've got to try and survive for another half an hour when you're gasping for air and you've got no you, your legs are full of blood and you're, you're absolutely gone, skis. Let's have a look at some stats here, guys. All right, so Turbo was... Eh, turbo was... Eh, no, he's pretty good. 176 metres, 53 post contact. Oh, three line breaks, one try assist. Pretty good. Pretty good. If, if, if he's not scoring hat tricks, it's just pretty good. Uh, Garrett knocked knocked out early in this one. Kohler was f- so nice in this. When they get Saab back... Oh, oh man... This is the stuff, man. This is the stuff. Um, what else we got here? Jackson Polo. Cherry was great. Cherry was so good. Um, yeah, Nathan Brown was just... The thing is, stats don't really show it. I mean, 112 metres is not too bad, eh? But he's, it's his line speed. It's his aggression. He's just... I mean, yeah, 38 minutes, 117 metres is great off the bench against Fish and Moses. Um I'd get to I'd get to finish off Manly in a sec, but yeah, Dylan Edwards was on one. He absolutely killed it. Um, what do you What do you go for? Two hundred and seventy meters, one hundred thirty one post con. No, so one hundred thirty one for Taruva. Uh, Brian Tor or two hundred six eighty four post contact. Wow, wow, absolutely brilliant. Schneider not quite as good as he was the week before. Mitch Kenny had a stinker of an error. Uh, Isaiah Yo, I was really surprised they brought him off for a really long time as well. I was a little bit like, what the hell's going on here? Uh, but when he came back on, Jesus Christ. It was funny, I was sitting there going, what are you doing, Cleary? Because obviously, Ivan Cleary doesn't make many mistakes. Best modern day coach. But um, when he start, staggered Moses and Fish and then he brought Moses off for so long, I was like, what are you... I mean, brought... um." Had Isaiah Yo off so long, I'm like, what are you doing, Cleary, bro? You're throwing this game. But then um, Isaiah Yo came back on and just started destroying. And I was like, oh, he knew what he was doing. But it obviously wasn't enough. But he must have known. Isaiah must have needed a break or something like that. Because, yeah, he came on and was he was actually a little quiet in the first half. And then just came on in his second stint and looked absolutely brilliant. Now, Seagulls, for me, as genuine contenders and threat and all that sort of stuff, they are. I'm getting Parramatta 2022 vibes. Like they can beat good teams. Like they lost the Dragons last week, handily, and then they put on a clinic against Penrith. <coughs> you know what I mean? I'm getting. I'm getting. I, I think. I genuinely think Seagulls could put 50 on 80 percent of the teams, not the top four teams, but and then possibly lose to a bottom eight team the next week. Um. So. I actually, in this game, I had a lot of people say consistently inconsistent. So if they want to, if they want to genuinely finish in the top four, they've got to be consistent. Um, it's okay to drop a bad game here and there. I mean, Penrith won the minor premiership and lost to the Tigers last year. It's okay, but you got to win a lot more of the, those ones than you lose. Let's <laughs> put it that way. But uh, yeah, great from the Seagulls and shout out to Cherry. Dolphs get it done. This was a crazy game too. I actually really enjoyed this game. Um, man of the match for me was Katoa. His kicking it was funny. It was, it fucking blew me away. All I've been hearing all off season is from like Joey and Freddie. There's no good har- There's no good young halves. There's no good young halves. What are you talking about, bro? This kid Katoa is a freak. And they said halves, not number sevens. What about um, oh, the kid from Galvin from the Tigers who's out for this one? And who's the kid from? Who's the kid from bloody um? Here again, so I'm just I'm real bad. Uh, Ethan Strange, brilliant, bro, absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was awesome. Tries Katoa, Hamaso, we hit in this one too. Uh, Cody Nikarima, Kenneth Bronwich. Uh, but yeah, really, really good game, man. I actually, I actually really enjoyed it. Look at that, had the less of possession. That is crazy. But completion rate eighty nine percent, crazy. 
absolutely crazy. Um, it really was a game of two halves. Like Dolphins looked really good in the first half. Then I don't know if they swapped jerseys in the second half, but it it um it really did change. Um, season man, two forty twenties. That's crazy. Some halves don't kick one in a season. This dude kicked two. Absolutely crazy. Um, but the big ones for this out of this game was Herbie and Flegler both going down. Same as Felice Cafusi. Really, really crazy, man. But Dolphins look really nice. Dolphins just genuinely look like a top eight team. Um, yeah, they, 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 they might make the top eight this year. Um, they really might. It's They look really good. They just sort of... They just look like a good footy team. Like I'm not... The, Never, never, not once have I thought top four or anything like that. Just every time they play, minus the first game, it's just a good footy team. They're just a good footy team. I, I don't know. It's just Wayne Bennett, man, it's absolutely insane. Um, nothing crazy in the stats here, guys. We'll have a look at the player stats. Um, Hamaso was great. I had him as a try scorer. Thank you very much. 157 meters, 28 post contact, one line break, five tackle breaks. Um, what else we got here? Jermaine Osaka was pretty decent. Herbie look, didn't look great the whole game and then got injured. Um, Bostock was okay. Jeremy Marshall King. Bruh. So nice. Flegler. Great first stint. Got injured early in his second stint. Uh, Felice Cafusi's, um was pretty good defensively. Um, Josh Kerr was solid. Uh, Ray Stone came on and made some real nice Trevojevic-style tackles as well. But, yeah, solid, solid game. Um, West Tiger, uh, man, I'm not even mad if I'm a West Tiger supporter. Like, they had a big one-point game against Parramatta last week, and they just looked a little flat in the first half. And to me, that's what lost them. A little flat in the first half, got jumped. They showed resilience. They came back. They don't win the second half last year. They would have got, pump they would have got pumped 42 to 4. Um, but they came back, looked great, won the second half. Really, really good from the Tigers. I, I'm, I'm not going to fold them for it. Like, to me, I think it was a short turnaround, but if not, it was, yeah, it was Monday they played last time. One-point game against Parramatta, short turnaround. Playing Dolphins in Brisbane. Got punched in the mouth in the first half. Came back, looked good in the second half. So, yeah, good on them. Uh, Stefano Akamanu is going to look real nice in a Blues jersey if he keeps doing this, man. He looks nice. Real, real nice. Titans-Cowboys. Yuck. Yuck game. Yuck. Um, what did I write about this game? Man of the match was Drinky. Drinky. If Drinky's not in this Cowboys team, I think this team looks bottom four at the moment. Not impressed at all. Um, really good bounce back game from Drinky, though. Uh, Val was pretty good as well. Um... Titans just aren't a good team. I know, I know they came back and made this look respectable. I think it was half Cowboys taking their foot off the gas, half Cowboys not being as good as where they are on the table. Like, they're on top, right? Cowboys are not the second best team in the comp right now. I, pro I promise you that. I promise you that. <laughs> Yeah, they're not. There's yeah. There's just no chance. Like they're 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 fine. They're winning games. I'm not knocking the Cowboys. But yeah, Drinky's Drinky's just been incredible. I think Val's been pretty good. He wasn't incredible in this game, but he just takes such nice carries. Griffin Neem looks great. Just a little something something missing. Something something missing. Um. But the thing is, man, as long as Cowboys keep winning games, I mean, who cares? Who cares? I mean, I remember that premiership they won. They were leaking 20 points a game just about. But, yeah, I just... Um, Reese Robson's so good. Shout out to um, Kyle Felt getting his tries. It was so funny. I was chatting to my mate as, we, as he scored this. So he overtook Matty Bowen as the leading try scorer in a Cowboys jersey. And it was just so... That game was so fitting for him to do it in. He was so bad that whole game. And I've said, if you've if you've been listening to me for a while... Kyle Felt can have the worst game of his life and then do some crazy thing that wins a team a game. And I've been, I've been saying this for like two and a half years on, on YouTube and TikTok and stuff. I just sit there and I'm about to rip him in a video going, this, how's this dude still in the NRL? And then he'll just do something so hectic. He was so bad this whole game. Titans are coming over the top of, of the Cowboys. He slots, he snatches an intercept and runs the field and scores a try. That is so Kyle Felt. Like, you got to give him props, man. Like, 
yeah, he makes mistakes. Yeah, he does dumb things. He does. He done like it. He got to talk like he had the ball and didn't play it properly, and then argued with the ref and got a penalty. Like, who does that, bro? And then he's he's pretty awful all game, and then he just snatches the game away like that. That's so Kyle felt. So, even though I've given you some rubbish over the years, brother, if you beat Matty Bowen at anything, you're doing pretty pretty damn good. So shout out to you, bro. But now I think the cows will be good. I think they just need a little tinker, a little new tinker. I think they're going to be. They're looking good enough to finish in the top eight. If they want to finish top four, they, they need a little something, something I can't put my finger on yet. Mm. That's my breakdown. <laughs> we'll have a look at the team stats quickly. but um, Great meters through the middle. That was brilliant. Um, Ten line breaks. Heaps of these were in the first half too. But they leaked seven line breaks themselves. Uh, tackle breaks, 36. Great average set distance, 47. These numbers are all brilliant. Ruck was a similar, 13 offloads to 7. Um, what else we got here? Tackle, see, all these numbers are pretty good, man. Just too many errors. Too many errors, bruh. Too many errors. But, yeah, cows, cows look at the goods, man. Drinky scary. Drinky scary. I think I think the thing that's yeah really worried me about the cows is they just haven't been great away from home, and they look really bad in the wet, you know, so... I guess they just win all their home games and don't play in the wet too often. They'll be fine. Um, interesting. They've got Parramatta next week. The Parramatta looked awful. But Parramatta on a skid and need a win. Parramatta are good at home. Cowboys aren't great at travelling. And, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But really torn on this one. Really torn. Raiders, Eels. Uh, yeah, scary time for the Eels, man. Scary, scary time for the Eels. Man of the match, Fogarty. Um, Parramatta had real nice field, but they, they did some all right stuff. But every time they got the ball in good field position, they'd drop it. They didn't drop it coming out of yardage and stuff like that. That's why I think the halftime score was what, like, was it 12 nil or 13 nil or whatever it was? Halftime, 13 nil. Like, that flattered the Eels, like, sort of thing. Like, Parramatta, like, just just awful with insight. Like, they'll do some real good stuff, get a penalty, whoever, get down there, drop the ball. And just not put... They didn't build any pressure at all through the whole game. And what was a little scary for me, 1 through 17, every single Canberra player was better than their opposing player. <coughs> from 1 to 17. Like, literally, Gutho, better than Rapana. Not tonight. Rapana had his kneecap hanging off, and he was still better than... Nah, Clint was... Clint maybe was the exception here. Clint was really good. Schiller was brilliant. Tomoko was brilliant. Chris was brilliant. Savage was great. Like, just everyone was good, and everyone from here was average, and the score showed. It was Parramatta seriously need to pray. Mitchell Moses has Wolverine bones, and he comes back quickly because... They could go on a serious skid if they don't get him back soon. And I was actually saying, I did this, I said this on my TikTok video. I personally would be getting on the phone to um, St. George and saying, have Ryan Madison, we need Lomax. They need middle forwards, they need a good offload, ball playing forward. Boom, Ryan Madison there, Zach Lomax comes over there. They can cover Ryan Madison they can't, they can't cover these two outside backs, man. Their outside backs just aren't good enough. They got cooked on there again. Tomoko's... Pfft, Tomoko could have been my man of the match so easily. Um, Fogarty's kicking game is just... He is damn near the best kicker in the comp at the moment, eh? Like, his kicking game is special. Like, Clint is a surgeon with taking high balls. Like... Like the big rivalry games with Bur Burton's putting up high balls and Clint's never Clint has never looked like dropping a Burton bomb. People are like they're impossible to catch, bro. Clint has never looked like dropping them. Fogarty was putting up similar ones and he was, doof, catching them like just not even juggling them, just doof. so good, man. Clint's so good at defusing bombs. Um, Blaze, he's not ready for first grade. Um, he's close. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at his missed tackles in a minute, but just simple missed tackles, and he he's a gun. He's one hundred percent a gun. He's not ready. Like compare, like rookie Ethan Strange versus Tulangi. It was night and day. Strange, he's Strange skittled eels on multiple occasions. Tulangi made errors and slipped off tackles the whole game. He was pretty bad. Um, uh, Raiders could have been better. I mean. 
Parramatta, 75%, 1,900. The, the Parramatta middles don't get pumped like this ever. It was that, That's nuts, man. 600 metres to four. That's crazy. Nine line breaks to three. 36 tackle breaks to 19. Look at this play the ball. They could not hold. And I heard someone saying, oh, the refs are giving, giving Parramatta, you know, I mean, giving Canberra all these penalties. Yeah, bro, because Parramatta was holding them down because they were getting skittled. But I... I, I you, 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 it was man. They just they won the rucks so easily, and that that shows. Like it's just um. Uh, what else we got? Tackle efficiency eight ninety to eighty seven. Missed tackles twenty. Bureau brilliant thirty five. I thought that would have been higher. I really did. Um, negative plays ten to nine. Penalties conceded ten. <laughs> there you go. That's that's when you think about this. So actual penalties conceded. Ten. That's. 10 attacking raids are going to get on your line because no matter pretty much no matter where you are with especially with Fogarty's boot you're going to be tapping the ball in their half so that's 10 penalties is t essentially means 10 free attacking raids <laughs> like that's you can't come back from that man absolutely crazy I can't wait to see some of these Raiders stats Rapana came back from the gods he couldn't even walk off the field needed a wheelchair and he just comes on still runs for 100 meters 63 post contact with line break and two tackle breaks tomoko what was his stats 209 60 post contact two line breaks three line break assists two try assists eight tackle breaks this dude is the truth man that dude is the absolute truth so i thought sebastian chris is pretty solid savage beast 235 metres, 62 post contact, two line breaks, one try assist, three tackle breaks. Brilliant. Oh, man, Papalit was good late. Tarpany, I was actually, the first half, I'm like, man, Tarpany doesn't seem himself this year, eh? Looks great. Look, man, I'm going to cut it here. 1 through 17, Raiders were brilliant. They were just really, really good. I just, there was not a bad player in that team. They were really good from top to bottom. Really, really nice. Um, Eels... Not really worth talking about, but we'll have a quick look. Like I said, Clint always gives you an eight and a, That was probably Clint's worst game I've seen in ages, and it was an eight and a half out of ten. Um, 92 run metres, line break, uh, line break assist, try assist, one tackle break. Um, Sebo scored a couple tries, but yeah, not really worth it. I thought Bailey Simonson was running pretty hard, but yeah, I, don't, I just don't know. He's just, he's just not him, you know what I mean? He's just not him. But I just I just kept thinking, like, oh, imagine if Zach Lomax was there. They'd be doing so much more damage. But anyway, uh, Ryan Madison, he looked okay at the start, but I just don't know if he suits Parramatta's style anymore. I, I think Hopgood's come in and just looks so much better. Like, I, I genuinely think if you can get Lomax for, for Ryan Madison, like, can anyone think of a game in the last, just say the last year, for, so from this time last year to now, can you think of a game where Ryan Madison dominated it? I can't. I can't. And with Bryce Cartwright coming back, like, what's Ryan Madison do? Come on and play 35 minutes and make a couple offloads? I don't know. I I'd do it. I'd do it. All right, that's it, lads. Let's have a look at next week. All right, so we've got the Knights versus the Roosters. <sighs> that's going to be a tough one, man. That's going to be the Knights are favourites? Damn, Storm Bulldogs. Storm are running. I mean... Bulldogs are running red hot and they're playing six six dollars seventy. God damn. What? Broncos a dollar thirty four with all their players out? That's crazy. Um what else we got? No, oh, sorry, Broncos versus the Dolphins, Storm versus the Bulldogs. Um Saturday we have the Warriors versus the Seagulls. That is an interesting game. Warriors are short, son. Man, I tell you what. Nah, it's not worth it. Um oh man. Parramatta versus the Cowboys. Look at these odds, two dollars to dollar eighty-two. It's crazy. Um, Rabbitohs versus the Sharkies. Oh, Sharkies could get a hide in here. Coming off a buy, Sharkies nice and fresh. Tigers versus the Dragons. Raiders versus the Titans. Oh, Panthers get a buy. Wild man, wild, wild, wild. Who am I thinking? Oh, no, nah, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. All right, lads, that's it. We're done. It's 10 o'clock. We're all done now. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>